this video is out of sequence since it really uh, needed to be in the middle of this video, but um, um, I finished up the video and then I decided to go back and add this. Um, I forgot to mention that I'm using this uh, part number on the seal power piston rings. It's E-229K, uh, 20 thousandths oversize. Um, I neglected to show that in the last video, um, or the main body of this video. Also, I wanted to point out that uh, there's a lot of labor that I've, that I've kind of skipped over. Um, I'm cleaning parts as I go, and this is a used piston that I clean the top off, um, clean the uh, clean the sides off, clean the crud out of the, uh, well actually these weren't used that very much, so there wasn't a lot of crud in there, but I cleaned the piston ring grooves, cleaned down in there, get all the oil, oil out of it, cleaned the rod, everything. So. Um, I really haven't shown that labor, but it, I'll probably spend 15 minutes per piston cleaning this thing up. So I wanted to make sure you understood that this is not a, a quick process. It takes me hours to put pistons in because of the cleaning. But uh, I've wire brushed the top of this piston dome, and uh, this was this is number one. I'm about to put it in the number one bore, and uh, obviously you can see I've already done five, and I've already done two, two right there. So that's number two piston cleaned off so uh, I'll show you a dirty one just so you get an idea uh, of what the dirt the dirty one is like um, this is number six so this is the dirty piston I haven't cleaned yet I believe this is number six so that's what the domes look like it's what they came out of the engine I just stuck them in a uh, glad black glad bag and sealed them up and marked them uh, but this is number six so they, they clean up pretty easily, but because uh, that's really not a lot of stuff, and it just scrapes off. But uh, just wanted to make sure you understood there's a considerable amount of labor going in using uh, used pistons to clean them up before you put them in. So having said that, I'm now going to start the uh, or show the main video. This video is going to show you how to install the pistons. Um, even though um, my engine is, uh, or my engine work is done inside a shop with closed doors. Um, when I'm not working, I cover it up with a plastic bag to keep any dust off of it. And I, I like to use these uh, bags with drawstrings on it so I can close them tight and keep the dust out uh, really well. So anyway, um, it's been sitting here a couple of days and I'm about to get back started on it. So I'm fixing to remove the plastic off the engine. And I'm gonna show you, uh, the first thing you do when you install pistons, you have to uh, check the ring gap. So uh, I'll, st I'll show you that now. For this build, I'm using seal power piston rings. You have a top ring, which is groove one. You have a second groove, which is uh, ring two, or groove two. And you have a third groove, which is the oil groove, and it really contains three components, but that's, they come in separate packages. So um, I've un unwrapped the first groove, uh, top groove set, and pulled out one ring. So what you do is you push the ring you have to figure what's top and what's bottom. Where's the ring at? There we go. Um, if there is a top and bottom, there'll be a mark on it. And I don't see a mark, so these go in either way. So what I'm about to do is put, and these go, I'm gonna do cylinder number one, cylinder one, cylinder three, cylinder five. And I'm gonna check the gap in each cylinder, each ring one at a time, and keep that ring set with that particular piston. Um, actually, since I have piston five ready, that's the one over there on the table, I'm gonna do cylinder number five first. So um, what I'm gonna do is um, set the phone down, or camera down, and I'm gonna put my first ring groove, my top ring groove in the bore. And you wanna push it down, I would say about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Don't go all the way to the bottom, because most of your wear on a used uh, cylinder is gonna be at the top anyway. So you wanna push it back down about an inch and a half. Um, and check your gaps there. All right, to check the ring gap, you can see the gap right down here. It's right in there. And I'm taking a filler gauge, and right now the filler gauge is on 0 0.019 inches. And by running the filler gauge in the gap, if I can find it, it's right there. The filler gauge fits right in the gap down there. So it came right through it. So. A gap is at least 0 0.019 inches, barely there. So um, that's that 0 0.019 inches is the service limit for a uh, Kohler uh, Marine industrial engine. 
So those are the ones I'm going with. That's on the top groove. On the second groove, I believe it's 0 0.026. I'll verify that when I check the second groove, but or the second ring. But right now, this is the first ring, and I've just checked it, and it uh, is within tolerance, or it's bigger than the 0 0.019 by a slight amount. So I know I'm safe there. You want to be slightly bigger, not smaller. So next, I'll check the second uh, second ring gap. All right, when I check the second ring, second ring in the cylinder number five, uh, put it in there and it uh, was bigger than the specification from the Kohler catalog, which was 0 0.031 for service limit. So then it gave a production limit of 0 0.018 to 0 0.026. I then checked it on the 0 0.019 and uh, it did not clear that either. So uh, I had to file it. So I took a file, so we find it. So. I'm looking, I'm looking for the shiny surface. Um, getting shit right in there. So, so I took a file. Uh, where's the file? The file's right here. I took a hand, uh, just a standard metal hand file, and I filed the uh, file this edge of the groove down. There's the shiny side right there. I filed that down and rechecked it, and then it was in just uh, now back up to at least 0 0.019, which is uh, within production specification on this uh, particular engine. So, um, actually, that's the first time I've ever had to file a ring to improve the, to make the gap right, but there's something you got to do. So, I've done the first ring and the second ring on the uh, cylinder number five. I'm about to do the third groove, which is um, it's got two rails and a center support for the oil ring. I'll check those gaps, and once I'm done, then I'll install the rings on the piston. To do that, you use what's called a piston ring expander. This is a tool that helps you, uh, grabs the end of the rings, expands it out, and then uh, puts it down over the piston. Um, it's kind of a two-handed operation, and you also have to hold the piston steady, so I like to sit down, use my knees to hold the piston rod, and then uh, my two hands to uh, install the rings on the piston. So. Um, I may not be able to do a great video of that. I'll show you how the ring expander works, but when I actually put the pistons on the ring, uh, excuse me, put the rings on the piston, I probably won't be able to show that. We'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't know if I've showed this already, but what I do is I use a piston without the rings on it, and I use a clean piston without the rings on it, and I use it to push the rings down to the bore to get them down evenly in, in, in the bore. So I just put an oil ring, uh, oil ring in there and I'm using the piston to push it down evenly all the way around so that's a little trick that I don't know if I showed or not or showed already or not but I thought I'd make sure okay to put the rings on the pistons you start with the oil control ring and there's a expander or spacer or whatever you want to call it but you uh you just separate it and work it kind of in a spiral fashion and work it into a groove on the piston this is the easiest one easiest one to do so it's pretty easy to do next one or the next two are rails that go above and below this expander and uh, i want to check the gap on these rails here and they were fine uh, so what i do is i work the first ring into the start light by the way if the, if the gap if the expander ring gap is right there you start you go 120 degrees from there so you go uh, which basically a third of the way around so you start the, the real the uh, rail back here on the back about a third of the way around and then the other rings the other rail starts a third of the way back on that side you try to stagger them uh, 120 degrees apart so like i say you work the first rail into the bottom under beneath the spacer and you work the next rail into the top above the spacer and that's how you do the oil control ring um, for the other rings um, let me explain something real quick the second ring second groove ring has a mark on it for top if you can see it there's this right Right there. Show you guys focus. Somebody want to focus right there. So I want to focus, I guess, because I'm going to make it down here and maybe focus. There you go. Alright, so now it's focused. So you see that's marked top. So that means the ring, the top of the ring points up on top or towards the top of the piston. The first ring, uh, first degree ring didn't have a marking so it can go either way. But you may be careful about making sure you ver verify which direction these rings go in. The reason they do it, the reason they have a marking is because the back side of the ring, if you see it, there's a little bevel on the back right in there. 
right there. That bevel has to be on the down, has to be facing down because there's a top mark right there. So there's a reason that they have the markings on there. So now I'm about to set, install the rings on the piston. We'll do the two uh, oil, oil groove rings. Then the, uh, the next one is the uh, second groove and then the last one is the top groove. And I'm gonna use this ring expander tool to put them on with. And again, you stagger them uh, 120 degrees around, a third, a third, a third. So at least that's, well, on, excuse me, on the second, groove, the second ring and the top ring, I stagger those 180 degrees apart. I put them one facing one side and the other facing the other side. That way they, uh, the, the, two groove, the two gaps don't line up. So uh, next video, the, uh, I'll show you the piston with the rings fully installed. Like I was saying, putting piston rings on the piston is kind of a pain in the butt. Right now I've got the piston kind of clamped between my knees and I'm using two hands to put these rings on. The second uh, ring was the hardest install because um, it kind of wants to go into the first groove as you go down, but uh, you just have to work it down there with your, with your expander and your fingers and get it in the second groove. I'm now about to put this, the first ring in the first and the top groove with this uh, ring expander and I just want to show you about it's kind of how I, how I do it by sitting down and using my knees and my hands so it's kind of a pain in the butt but this is how I do it and I've always done it so it works for me.